I'm Atubo Judge and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now listen, let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Father, say it with me. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we honor you for your word is coming fresh and it's penetrating our hearts indeed like a two-edged sword. Thank you because of your love, you give us your word. And Lord, we, in response to your love, keep your word. And therefore, we see miracles in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we are still talking about working in fi spiritual financial intelligence. See, now, there is a pattern. There is a way that God works. And you need to understand the financial system in heaven. Now, I started this whole series. If you go listen to the first week, I started this. Sharing with you how to balance your mind where God's provision is concerned. There are things you are required to do. So we spoke about offerings and then we spoke about tithing. Now, if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to it it will bless and it will help you understand even as we go further now those are two important things that you do now some say what about first fruit what about um, um seed sowing what about now nah, all those things fall under offerings offerings is whatever the lord commands you to give or whatever you choose to give to the lord now remember the rule is this it must never be done grudgingly. It must never be done of necessity. Don't do it because God needs it. I told you, if it gets to that place where you are forced or compelled to do something now, by who? Not by the Spirit of God per se, but by man or the need compels you to do that thing. That is a sign that someone has disobeyed the Lord. Yes, because every need, every, the same thing with ministry work, the same thing with your personal life. If you get to that place where you are probably compelled to borrow, compelled to ask for something, now you are being pushed in your heart to do that. It's not necessarily that somebody is telling you, you must go and borrow. No, you, you feel that's the only way out. Now, it just means someone has disobeyed the Lord because God has a financial system and in his financial system, listen to me, he made adequate provision for your daily bread. Now, this is truth. I, I, you know, sometimes, like I said on, on Monday, your mind's got to process the word of God. These were things that I came in contact with many years ago that challenged me to begin to walk by faith. If this is true, then why? Why am I not seeing it in my life? And I began to pray and seek the mind of God until it began to walk in my life. So, everything you need God has made provision, clear provisions for them. Everything you require, 
So when you get to the very point where you need that thing and it doesn't show up, that is just a sign. Now let this sink in your mind. It will help you. It will help you when you relate with the Lord. The moment you get to a place where you were supposed to do this now, for example, and the, the resources to get it done is not there. And you're sure you're supposed to do that thing. Now, when I mean something, not just, okay, God said I should go and do. No, maybe, maybe pay your bills. You are at the spot where you are supposed to pay your bills. And you got there and there is no money to pay the bill. What do you do? Now, the first thing that must settle in your mind is this truth. The Lord has made provision for it. So why am I not seeing it? Someone is definitely in disobedience where God is concerned. Because God has spoken to somebody. Now, it may be someone you know. It may be someone you don't even know. Because sometimes, you see the way the, way the kingdom works. Ah, ah, you know, listen. Ah. You see, there is provision for everything. Remember what Paul said? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory hear me hear me god doesn't just give money he supplies all your needs now how does god supply all your needs i'm going to teach you something today that is so important and i want you to open your heart you need to take down these notes how does god supply all your needs listen now, there are different kinds of needs that we have. You know, some needs are recurrent. Now, when I mean recurrent, I mean it's something, maybe a bill you have to pay every month or, or something you have to pay every year, like house rent, school fees, um, tax bills, whatever, you know, sales, staff salaries. Now, these are recurrent expenditures. Now, how do you get God, how do you get to trust God to meet that need? Then there are other needs that are um, not necessarily recurrent, but they, they ease your, your well-being. So remember, he says his thoughts is for your welfare. Remember, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So needs like I need a car for transportation now, you see? Now, that is something that is not recurrent. That's something that you have it, you have it. So you just start maintaining it. So now, but apart from that, you have other recurrent expenditures, like I said earlier. Then you have these needs that are once in a while, or as the case may be, or as the need, the, the need arises, you have those things, um, those needs. So how do I get God to meet these needs? I'll tell you. Get, understand first that this is how heaven operates. When you make a request to God, this is what God does. You pray, oh Father, I am starting school, Lord. Or, I've shared this with you, my children are starting school. Or, Lord, I'm going to rent this apartment. I just want to know what your mind is concerning. I want to know you're with me on this because Lord, I expect you to meet this need. Now this has nothing to do with whether you have a job or you don't have a job. This has nothing to do whether you have so much money in your bank account or you have zero money in your bank account. It's the same principle. Hear me, the same principle. So you go before the Lord and say, before you start out. Now, if you have been doing this on your own already, you can still change it by going before the Lord. Just do what I tell you to do. Father, I'm about to start paying school fees. Oh Lord, I'm, 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 we're, sin we're sincerely desiring a bigger apartment. And, and this is our reason. But Lord, I just want to know what's your mind concerning this. 
Now, when, the moment you make that request to God, remember the Bible says his word is yeah and amen. So, how will God answer you? Now, you know, in your mind, if I will move to that apartment, then I need to have, I need to start earning a bigger salary if you're working. Because to afford that, I need, now that's your mind thinking that's not what God is saying. And those are the distractions I was talking about last week, Friday, that you need to get rid of in your mind. When you approach God, let your salary not be one of the things that you're basing your faith on. Then it becomes a distraction, I'm telling you the truth. Ask God, talk to God like one who ends nothing. That's how you approach the Lord. So you say, Lord, we're about to embark on this new project. We're about to embark on this new system. But I need to be sure what you think concerning it. Now, this is what God does. When he answers you, he releases an angel. He releases an angel. Now, you see this in the life of Daniel. Daniel will pray, pray, and God will release an angel. And you know the story, the Prince of Persia. And that happened to David, not just, um, sorry, Daniel, not just once. I'm talking about the angel being released. An angel will show up and, and say, oh, since you started praying, the day you set your heart to pray, God sent me with the word. Now, if it's a recurrent thing, that angel shows up and you just earn yourself a new angel working with you. The job of that angel, he does nothing else in your life but to see to it that that need is met. He sees to it. It's his job. He sees to it that that particular need is met. Now, you on this other side will just realize that when it is time for this, maybe it's your house rent, maybe it's um, children's school fees, maybe it's your staff salary. You just realize that whenever it is this season, there are certain movements you begin to see. Now, you, you may not have money for many months. You, you may be trying all kinds of things for many months. But once that season is approaching, without your effort, you will just notice that things begin to show up. Things begin to happen. A favor, someone just calls you and come. Um, there is this job. I, I, I think you can do it. Come, come, let's, let's, let's. And then you just like, mm. and, no, 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 I'm serious. Come. And then you just get in. And then you get it like, whoa, just like that. Now, what do you think is happening? You see, there is an angel behind that thing. Now, his job is to see to it that that particular need is provided when you need it. Now, every recurrent thing, an angel shows up for it. Secondly, if you ask God for a car, for example, and you wait. Now, I'm not saying you ask God for a car and then you start doing everything to buy one by yourself. You ask him for a car and then you begin to wait. Patiently. I'll talk to you about patience. Patiently waiting. And, and what's on your mind? Lord, you've not said anything concerning the car. Now, it's either you're going to hear the voice of God come to you. Or it depends on how God will relate with you. Or you have a dream. Or while you're waiting, an open door will come. And the open door, you know, sometimes life situation kind of drives us into a certain path. You know, someone just shows up and say, hey, um, I'm relocating. I want to sell this, my car. You know what? I, I think I should sell it to you. And then you look at yourself and like, whoa, I just prayed for a car. And this is happening. Now, what's going on? God is telling you that he has answered. Now, you know what? When, when, when that happens to you, hear me and hear me, because we're closing with this. When that happens to you, you just know that you will never 
lack a car again for the rest of your life. Say how? Yeah, because for that thing to happen means an angel from heaven has shown up in your life. So he's just brought the first one. The job of that angel and the assignment of that angel. Now, you just asking God for one car. Father, just give me a car. Just give me a car. But you see, God lives in eternity. So when God is answering you for a car, you are thinking one car. God is thinking car, anything car for the rest of your life. So when God is releasing an angel, what does God tell the angel? See to it that my son or my daughter has have a car. Yes, sir. And that angel is released from heaven to earth. His job is to see to it that you have any car that you desire at any moment in time. If they steal your car, he will replace it immediately. That's his job. If you give out the car, he will replace it immediately. That's his job. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, well, now I'm going to continue talking about this tomorrow because my time is up. You, you need to get this thing settled in your mind. I'm sharing these things with you because they are true. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, get out there and expect a miracle and you will receive one today. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye.